Amen. I'm so excited uh, to be here. We are privileged to actually share this time. We don't take it for granted. Uh, anytime we are trusted to teach the word of God, we value it. And uh, Julia and I have, uh, I met this girl 2003, first year in the university. They sent me to go and read law, but I read law and left with wife. Praise God. Uh, in December, I was 12 years in marriage. December, this year, it will be 13 years in marriage. Some of you are as young as I was then. Don't worry. We didn't fail in school. Praise God. Jesus has been born in our heart and Julia has been saying, you see, oh my, see, see, why are you videoing me? Who am I? Please, look at, look at, look, look, look at, look, 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 look at woman. Look at woman. Born again, God-fearing, humble. My God. Clap for my wife. Oh, baby. My God. The one that puts the pep to my step, the quiver to my liver. I know, no. Hey, 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 hey. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Praise God. Please, let's be seated in God's presence. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you tonight. We open our hearts to receive your word with meekness. Anoint me to teach truth in simple and clear language that everyone can understand. Anoint my listeners to understand better than I teach and to appreciate deeper than the revelations I bring. That at the end of the day, our lives will bring forth fruit to the praise of your glory in Jesus' name. All right, straight to our conversation. What is heartbreak? Now, when I saw the topic, I said, ah, some people will miss this kind of program not knowing that they need it. Because I'm going to try to speak to the single and to the married within the same conversation. So I'm going to do some definition of terms so that you come along with me very clearly. Now, what is a heartbreak? heartbreak? Heartbreak is a physical, mental, or emotional pain from losing a relationship you didn't expect to lose. Now, here's the deal. A lot of people are in relationships that are lost. So people perceive heartbreak from the perspective of a relationship that is broken. There's something called implosion. That's how relationships fail in the body of Christ. When people are together but are not together for why God put them together, the relationship has imploded. So we easily perceive heartbreak from the perspective of breakfast. Boy is no longer doing or girl is no longer doing. So when people are trapped in a relationship that isn't working again, according to the patterns of God, they're already in a heartbreak situation. Because one of the worst things I see on our pages or when we go minister is when people say, I wish I met you before I married. Now when somebody can stay on Instagram and write that to the public view, that means the situation is so bad, the person is no longer hiding. So a lot of people are experiencing it. So we want to see how we can dissect this heartbreak thing. Because there are homes here that will be healed from this weekend because you are heartbroken. That's the truth. So I'm not just going to create a situation of hopelessness by my teaching and just expose this is what heartbreak is. No, we are going to try to navigate a path because in God, there's no problem that lacks a solution. No problem at all that lacks a solution. So let me say this to you. There will be some flogging this weekend. I can't lie to you. I use Okari Kane when I'm talking. Do you understand? <laughs> because when something is stupid, we call it stupid. Praise the Lord. Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh -huh. See, let me tell you. There are things we should stop pretending about in the body of Christ. Pregnancy is nine months. It's nine months. No favor factor can make you carry pregnancy for four months and to be normal. You will go to hospital and deposit the same baby. And be praying for the baby to survive. Because the gestation period is fixed by God. Do you understand what I'm saying? So we're going to call a spade a spade in certain things this weekend. So we're going to navigate and talk to single. We're going to navigate and talk to the married. We're going to find a way to reduce the heartache we suffer. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because some people listening to me, you know how those sleepless nights happen. You know how the tears happen. Praise God. And God will help us through in Jesus' name. All right, I'm going to identify four key reasons why we experience heartbreak. Four key reasons why we experience heartbreak. Number one is that we don't follow divine direction. The people who should be most certain in life are children of God. But the uncertainty in the body of Christ is alarming. Why do people bring relationships to me that last only three months? Who told you? Who sent you? How did you begin it? And I'll give you a scripture I'll share with my wife before we left the room this afternoon. We are making the mistake of Peter. Jesus comes to Peter. Peter just messed him up and he's resurrected from the dead and he's speaking to Peter and he says, Peter, do you agape me? 
Go and read your Bible. Peter replies him, I feel you. No, Jesus was asking a different question. Your English translation puts it as love, love, love. No, it's not just, do you love me? I love you. No. Jesus was asking, do you agape me? How deep is your response to me? Is it beyond feeling? Peter said, you know what I feel towards you. So a lot of times we are not following divine direction, we are following feeling. Let me tell you, there are millions of women all over the world who can evoke my feeling beside my wife. So if it is feeling I followed, I cannot be loyal to her. I don't have to lie to anybody. See my beautiful wife. Nobody is beautiful enough to keep another person faithful. Nobody. You, you can, who are you? If your husband is faithful, thank God that he's responding to. It's not you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Go and thank God though. He's responding to God. Because nobody has pillars that keep everything standing forever. Hey. Hope you know sex, for instance, was not meant to satisfy. Oh. Can I come down? <laughs> sex was not meant to satisfy you. Sex was meant to deepen hunger. That's why you do and go back. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> sex was meant to deepen hunger. You say, oh, man of God, I don't know what's doing me. I want to stop. I can't stop. His hunger is going deeper. Virgins don't even know how privileged they are. Because you can't miss what you have not tested. It is well. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Are you understand what I'm saying? So, we need to begin to silence the capacities of flesh and listen for divine direction. Some of you are single here. It's not Satan's fault. Oh. You are looking for somebody that has money and God sent your husband as an applicant. It's your problem, oh. Your eyes are too sharp, oh. God say your husband will make money in 15 years, but you are here expecting him to come with money, oh. Mm, pastor, it is well. Divine direction. My God, I married through crowdfunding. I'm proud to say it. If my father didn't pay for my wedding, I would have still been single. Hello? This, see, this, see, I met this girl first year in university. I asked her second year in university. She accepted third year in university. We began to date officially. I married two months after my NYC. And I was working for my biological father who was paying me 15000 Her salary was 10 times my salary. That girl. Because she came out, she graduated before me. While she went to serve in Akure, I was just passing out from ABU because I was studying law. I did five years, she did four years, she's business administrator. I went to the law school. She was done with service before I went to service. I passed her in October, we were married in December. So even my child and introduction were done as a copper. Because we looked at ourselves and made a decision that it is us we want. And we are going to marry under a tree if family cannot sponsor it. If you can't attend under a tree, pay for a home. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. That's why we started our lives. We made a decision. Some of us are a decision away from marriage. It's not Satan. It's not Satan. You want a man that will come and succeed where your father failed. It took your father 65 years. He couldn't make the kind of money expecting from a 25-year-old guy that has a future. <laughs> your divine capacity to listen to God is closed because poverty is pursuing you. You are taking decisions based on poverty. It is well. Bini City, are you ready? <laughs> Let me go back to the holy ground. It will help me. <laughs> Our heart broken. We are not following divine direction. Because you read nonsense on social media that told you it's better to cry in a Benz than to be happy on a bicycle. You don't know tears. Billionaires have come to me for counseling. You will see money. Money will see you. can't recognize it. Do you understand English? You will see money. Mon you will see, let me tell you. Let me tell you. I, I take permission from heaven to tell you the truth. The joy of the woman seated here who is our mama in this house is more because of the Christ in this man who is our papa in this house than any other thing you think. You have not seen where somebody frustrates you in all you think you have, you are looking for. You will just realize that Jesus makes the difference. 
Jesus makes the difference. Divine direction. The greatest asset of a child of God is divine direction. If Jesus did not follow divine direction, he would have died before his time. I must need go to Capernaum. It's not I want to. I have to. No, I have to go to Capernaum right now. Some of us are going to places God did not send us. Because they told you, you stay indoors too much, you will not find husband. So you went to a party. That's foolishness. You were led by the voice of men, not the voice of God. Divine direction. The greatest asset a believer has. Who sent you where you they go? Oh, and I'll bring a word to my nation, Nigeria. In a generation of Japa, be careful where you run to. Be careful where you run to. The best place to be on earth is not America, United Kingdom, South Africa, or anywhere but in the will of God. If the will of God is Benin City, I'll tell you the truth. That's where you find the greatest fulfillment in your life. So people are heartbroken because they don't follow divine direction. Let me tell you, Satan is not as powerful as disobedience. Satan is not as powerful as disobedience. Satan couldn't get them out of the Garden of Eden until he got them to disobey. Their disobedience took them out, not Satan. They had an instruction. The problem of Adam was the problem of the instruction he did not obey. Satan existed there but powerless until man moved in disobedience. So the safest place to be is in the place of obedience. If you read Hosea, oh, I thought this thing in some places and they hate me for it, but it's the truth of God's word. Because we live in a generation that just want to talk about, I know who I am. Let me tell you, the guy who was the prodigal son was the son of his father, but he ate with pigs, notwithstanding his identity because he was not where he should be. So we have a generation that wants to flash my identity in Christ. I know who I am in Christ. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Blah, blah, blah. But you can't keep a relationship. There's something wrong with your brain. You are blasting in tongues 10 hours. Thank God for January fast all over the churches in Nigeria. I'm one of them. I'm fasting too. Pali, kati, 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 kata. When you are done with your kata, 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 mumu, no sense. Oh, Paul says, I, I don't make the grace of God in my life in vain. Your decision can waste your spirituality. Your decision, it can waste your spirituality. Disobedience. You just find yourself in a relationship you can't defend. <laughs> God will just call you, this relationship, what does he mean? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Let's look at a few scriptures. Let them not say that. Pastor just brought this guy from Abuja. I just came to insult people. You know, I really come to I came to share the word of God. <laughs> Praise God. Hebrews 13, Hebrews 3, verse 19, amplified. Hebrews 3, 19, amplified. Okay, we'll start from verse 18 so that you get the context of that scripture. Ooh, amplified. Thank you. So we see from verse 18, and to whom did he swear an oath that they would not enter his rest? How can God be swearing against somebody? To whom did he swear an oath that they would not enter his rest? A good marriage is a resting place. But to those who disobeyed, those who would not listen to his word. Oh, I bring a word for you, Benin. After I read verse 19, then I'll tell you that word. Verse 19. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So we see that they were not able to enter. This is heartbreak. Something you desire but cannot access. Nobody here bargained for a bad marriage or want to bargain for it. They were not able to enter. The word able means that they attempted. So there's an attempt. I want to enter. But why can't they enter into the rest? The promised land because of unbelief and unwillingness to trust in God. That's why they could not enter. I bring you a word, especially singles. Oh, I get, I get agitation from singles every time, every time. This is my gay. Oh, 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 oh. God is more interested in you getting married than you are to get married. Because he has a divine purpose tied to your getting married. Your obedience away from entering properly. Simple obedience. You know, my wife shares a story all the time about when we talk about marital release. Very powerful story. So this lady in her prayer, God just 
nudges her heart to join a gym. Go and register in a gym. She was like, I'm fit. I don't, I mean, I'm okay. The nudge continued in her heart. So she goes to this gym and registers. The day she registered in that gym was the last day of the guy who ended up marrying her there because he was starting a gym of his own. So he just wanted to just have a last workout where he used to go to. He was starting one of his own as a business. Divine direction. Divine direction. Just move. Just go right there. Oh, that's why God was disappearing apostles in the New Testament because an Ethiopian man needed to be taught. You need to move from where you are now somewhere else. Not to anxiety. No. Every relationship you choose out of desperation will deal with you. Because you are incapable of making a good choice while desperate. Anything goes. Anything goes. So you need to watch it. Check the obedience level in your life to what God is telling you to do. Let me tell you this one. You will not, this one will not come easy to your flesh, but it's the truth. Every time you felt stranded, it's because you shut God out. How can you have the Holy Spirit and be confused? How? From where? Which Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit did not just bring tongues. Oh. The Bible says, you guide us into the knowledge of all truth. So when I look at that woman, oh, Paul says, henceforth, no we no man after the flesh. So I was not just seeing a girl. I see my future. I see my future. Hey, Jesus. They say I used to speak extreme sometimes. So I wanted to say something now. Let me guide it small. You just see gay. Curves. 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 <laughs> curves. Curves that can curve your life. Curve. I know some people, pastor, they married like a proper leper like broom. One child changed the equation. Boom. Come and carry your leper lesson now. Somebody marry wife that if you do like this, he has gone around the wife. After he passed children by himself, he did like this. He couldn't even go around. I had to be here. Obedience. Why? Where you begin determines how you travel. So if you begin in obedience, you realize it's easy to be obedient. Uh, the obedient in Nigeria now, this is now sounding like campaign. <laughs> I just realized I've been going obedience, obedient, obedient. I better go. I better go. Now, Bible, they preach. Praise God. So that's no, number one reason. Number two reason is lacking wisdom. Marriages made in heaven fail on earth because people don't have sense. God does not guarantee the working of a marriage even if he puts it together. Who determines it? You. I give you a story from scripture. Jesus shares a parable. Very simple parable. This guy was going to travel and he gave his servants money. God can provide what he will not protect. Why? He left the protection to you. The governor of this state is more responsible for this state than the president of this nation. That's why we run a federal system. There are things on the concurrent legislative list. There are things on the exclusive legislative list. There are things that are very, very exclusive to this state. There are things that are exclusive to the federal government. This is the chief law enforcer of the officer of this state. This is his jurisdiction. So Jesus comes back. And number one guy comes in, he brings his prophet. Number two guy comes in, he brings his prophet. Number three guy comes in and he says, I know you are a wicked man. So I heed your money. And Jesus looks at him and, you know, the, the master rather looked at him and said, you know what? Even if you are taking my money to the bank, there would have been some type of interest. The problem with believers in this generation is that they put responsibility on God to do what they should do. Some people are praying for their marriages. God is just expecting them to go and read a book. God is tired of that empty prayer. Stop coming to me over what you can fix. Let me tell you, if my oil is running dry in my car, I should call a mechanic, not call a prayer fasting meeting. Let's begin to pray, baby. Oil is going down in the car. Your angel starts to ingrain out. Look at this foolishness. What, what's this foolishness? Is there, what, they'll just say, what's going, what, what's going on here? Do they have sense? Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7. Let's do that in the NLT and NKJV. We'll do both and see. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Yay. Proverbs chapter 4. Getting wisdom is the wisest thing you can do. 
getting wisdom is the way. Falling in love is not the wisest thing you can do. <laughs> People are just desperate to fall in love. You will fall, you stand up. Oh. Before when I see this, my those days, I'll be shaking. Me shake right now. See, I'm looking at her, I'm not shaking. <laughs> Sense has returned. <laughs> I thought she was an angel. She's not an angel, she's a human being. Human being. <laughs> oh God. Flesh and blood. That time Mumu was already me, Mumu. <laughs> when school, then I introduced extra crew. You'll be talking to CC and Mumu. Go and sleep. Now you come, come and keep me all night. Let's see. <laughs> all, all night for am I a fool? I was a fool. Mumu. Do, 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 do. Hey, I mean, we're in school. See, now God said me an offer. Jesus. You're in class reading. You're thinking of woman, 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 woman. Then I'll read for 30 minutes and I'll go to where she's reading. Oh, how you do? How's your reading going? <laughs> I read for 15 minutes. I'll go again. Oh my God, how's the reading going? Mumu? <laughs> then, like around 3 a.m., 3 a.m., I mean, ah, university life, I miss it. Time was, time, time was just nonsense. Around 3 a.m., I will now walk out to her hostel. She says she won't sleep. She has 7 a.m. lecture. Guess what? She says she, she wants to sleep. And we get empty and I introduce extra cool that goes on to 6 a.m. So I walk out to her hostel. We we'll managed to part like 3.30 a.m. or 4 sometimes. Guess what? As I just turn my back and I'm going, we have died the call. Till today, I can't remember the useless things we're talking about. <laughs> Nonsense! Then we'll speak till one minute to six. Then we'll not cut the call. I say, good night. We're in class at 7 a.m. Tell me, was I not a mumu? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Father, thank you for deliverance. I talk when I need to talk. I stay awake when I need to stay. When it's time to sleep, sleep so that I can be alive. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. To avoid heartbreak, you need more sense than emotion. To avoid heartbreak, you need more sense than emotion. Emotions will run you aground. Let me tell you oh, this one is deliverance for somebody. There's somebody you think you love. And he loves you too. He doesn't love you. He's just jobless and can chat you 24 hours. When he gets productive, you know have time like that. Go and free yourself. His entire value in life is data. Call him for introduction. You realize he just has 3,000 3, in his account. And he's just doing WhatsApp data only. But engaging you money tonight and you're feeling valued. You're joking. No husband has 24 hours time for any wife. Including yours sincerely. Is he a lie? Go and get sense. Because the, 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 the foundations of this marriage are deeper than chatting. Chatting is just one of those things we do because the foundation is strong. So somebody's chatting night and day. You think you are loved. You are not loved. He's jobless. It is well. <laughs> These people will stone me for a dog. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7. Let's continue. So people suffer heartbreak because they don't have sense. Simple. See, there's a way to hold the woman. The Bible said there's a, uh, the way of the fool wearies them all because he knows not how to go into the city. There is a way to keep this woman smiling. There's a way. See, let, let me read that scripture. I'll tell you something. I, I, I told some people recently in counseling. And in all you're getting, get understanding. Oh, man of God, I was counseling a couple and I realized, I told the husband something. You know, we had spoken for over an hour. He was not getting it. And I just told him something that clicked for him. I said, if you don't handle your wife well, you are not handling your distractions in life. Let me tell you, if you send a lot, no matter how not materialistic my wife is, very not materialistic, you know that thing they call a lot or alarm? It's a cure of distraction. You know, there are certain meetings because of what it will produce. You tell your wife, I'm getting this business call. She say, how many days do you want to go? Why? A lot. What's that? Wisdom. So you think, Women just want your presence. No. There is something that is present that can deal with your presence and absence. For instance, I tell you, some people are just saying, oh my God, he doesn't have my time. I want him to have my time. Let me tell you how I can cure that. If I really don't have time, by the time you see ticket for vacation, say you and the children, can you go and rest for three weeks? No, no, say I declare distraction. Mona, come off first. 
Who's come out? Go and rest for three weeks. <laughs> do you understand? My sister, they give you three weeks for London now. You go say, make you consider. He can go and walk. <laughs> Wisdom is the principle. Like Pastor was saying, I tell you the truth. The truth. If you read scripture, submission is wisdom. It's not punishment. Because the easiest way to get a man to cooperate is to defer to him. Honor man small, make you see. All his mumu buttons will just be pressed at once. Take off and landing at once. Bam! You will not even know what to do. Should I take off? Should I land? You just do like this. Just respect a man small. Oh, then pay attention to the emotion of a woman small, small, just small. Just send a woman the way you look today in church. My God, even angels are jealous. <laughs> Have you ever seen a situation where a girl is sitting with phone looking at one line text for two hours? Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I find. I find. What have you done? Hmm? Man of God, the way I solve my problem here, I go to some preacher, I tell my wife, and I'm not, this one is open secret. Do you know why before I preach, I talk about my wife? I've bought peace for like three weeks now. The praise I praise her today for like three weeks is to see me walking. I go for another program and say, have you seen my wife? My God, I married a wife, not a knife. Oh, she's a blessing to me. Ba, ba, ba. As I'm talking, see, even now it's working. See, it's working. It's working. It's working. It's working. Wisdom is the principal thing. There is a way to do relationship. Let me tell you, some of the heartbreaks you have gone through is not because the person was wicked. You didn't have sense to manage the relationship. Sense was lacking to manage the relationship. I'm tired of counseling ladies boys are asking for money. You are a man for God's sake. They're asking money. Asking money. I don't waste time to tell them. Red flag. Crimson red. This is like blood of Jesus. Red. 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 Run. Last week, it was urgent money. His rent is due. Next week, his car has broken down. Oga, before you met me, how did you survive? <laughs> Let me tell you the easiest way to get money from a woman rightly. We stand pressure and ask nothing. A good woman will say, no, you can't suffer in my presence. Then you still say, no, 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 no. She said, no, what are we for? What's this relationship for? Are we not one? Hey, hey, hey. She no, actually, don't worry, I'm trusting the Lord. I'm here. But Mumu is just first thing. Let me tell you, one of the most romantic things women see in men is the capacity to withstand pressure and stand. Everything, I just cry like cockroach. Uh, wisdom. She married me a broke man. I'm telling you. Sense can cover your pocket. Write it down. Sense can cover your pocket. For instance, you have people who are not, you are dating a girl, she will soon leave you. Because you are not using wisdom to cover your pocket. I will never forget. Never. And it's not empty promises. I say, babe, Thank you for your trust. But the day is coming, I tell you the truth. You eat breakfast in London, lunch in Paris, and close it with Nigerian fufu. I'm telling you. Hey! She just be looking at me. I married a man. I married a man. I married a man. I say, yeah, you married a man. You married a man. I, if your mouth is closed, it will smell. Talk. <laughs> Open it. Some people, your wife is on the verge of being tired of your marriage because they can't remember when last you made them dream. No dreaming. You can be face me, I face you, and the woman is charged up. She knows. I married a man. We are going somewhere. He's working hard. He's speaking to me. Not just, I don't know what's happening in this Nigeria. If people are saying, I die, we die. You have killed her. You have killed her. You don't have sense. You don't have sense. Baby, we know they die. When we are flying economy, business is looking at us. When we enter business, first class is looking at us. When we enter first class, private jet is looking at us. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you get what I'm talking about? You go enjoy for this life. You will not labor and another will eat. From this man, aha, you are made. You are made for life. Ah, what are you talking about? 
No year, yes, small girl will bring bread and collect him. It's not possible. <laughs> Johnson, it's your own. I belong to you. You put it and joking. It's working. It's working. It's working. <laughs> Wisdom is the principal thing. Relationship is a manual car. Some people just think it's automatic gear. Just put it, just be going. Relationship is extremely manual. See the way I'm matching the clutch to engage the gear. <laughs> hey! I was in the US once, man of God, broke. You know when you pay for the course you went for? I'm not kidding. I tell you the truth, I lie not. I was sitting... The breakfast in the inn, not even a hotel, inn where I was staying. And what was this breakfast? Cupcake, apple. Have you ever gone for breakfast? You drank like three cups of coffee, took apple, two cupcakes. Then as you are going upstairs to your room, three apple in one hand, two cupcakes. Because you need to survive. Then when you go to, it was a professional course. You go to where you are doing the course. Every snack is a meal. They say snack break. People are, people are doing like this, me. No. Have you ever eaten like five biscuits at once? I was eating anything. Then when I got back, I did one budget. There was one Chinese place close by $5 Chinese every afternoon. I just change the menu. It may be rice. It may, something. I just change it small to survive. So they took us on the tour. It was a professional course. I mean, I had all manner of people from different nations, a head of Port Authority, Kenya, head of this, head of that. I was the only thing that was not even a neck. I just carried myself as a private lawyer. <laughs> So they took us on the tour and said we had six hours for shopping. You finish tour, you punish people like me. Six hours to do what? So I went to one corner of the mall and sat down. Waiting for, oh, it was four hours. For the hours to pass and go back to the meter point so that they carry us. But in between that, I walked into a shop. Jesus. By the way, I buy more things for my wife than she buys for herself. Honest truth. It's not right. I'm telling you, wisdom is profitable to direct. If you say now, pick. My wife says, you choose better than I do. If somebody thinks you have sense like that, why won't she love you? Clap for me. Don't pretend. Hmm? So I saw this pink suit, man of God. Jesus. I calculated what was left in my survivor. It was not even really expensive then. It was about a hundred and something dollars. I gathered it. I picked, that was the only valuable thing I brought back to Nigeria. When I brought it, she didn't see suit. She saw blood. And David said to them, I need a drink. And they laid their lives down. See, if your spouse cannot see the history that creates memory of what you have done, your marriage doesn't have enough fuel to run. It doesn't have enough fuel. She looked at this suit. The suit is still hanging in her wardrobe. She used it for years. So value. She saw blood. She saw that you laid down your life, literally. And every day we're praying on that trip. God will keep you. God will provide. God will keep you. So I kept quiet. I came. I said, behold, I saw this and I couldn't resist it. I did everything. Gathered this, gathered that, and bought this suit. And stayed like this until I returned. It's all blood. What's the memory your spouse can run on, even at bad times? There are times you are quarreling with your spouse. When you remember where you are coming from, even the quarrel will reduce. Memory. So why do people suffer heartbreak? They don't have sense. Marriage is a manual relationship. It feeds off what you supply. Praise God. Number three, ignoring apparent red flags. Apparent. This red flag is looking at you. You have entered the relationship in the belief that the relationship is right. But let me say this to you. In dating and courtship, learn to sit on the judgment seat. Because in marriage, you will be permanently situated on the mercy seat. In dating and courtship, learn to sit on the judgment seat. Because in marriage, you will be permanently situated on the mercy seat. So people suffer heartbreak a lot of times because when they should be judging, they are applying mercy. Then they will now come back later and tell me, man of God, I thought he would change. Nobody is changing anything. If you are doing relationship and they believe they will change, you are deceiving yourself. Nobody is changing anything. 
Somebody that Holy Ghost has not been able to work on. Are you more than Holy Ghost? Who are you? Mere mortar. When they born you, eternal God has not been able to change somebody. You are seeing red flag. God will touch him. The Bible says that today is the day of salvation. Any salvation I cannot experience in dating, forget it in marriage. Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Courtship is the substance of marriage hoped for. The evidence of the marriage you have not come into. Some people suffer heartbreak. I told you, heartbreak is not just when somebody leaves you. Heartbreak is also when somebody drags you to a marriage that is pain. Marriage was not meant to be painful. Marriage was meant to be a very happy union. God looked at Adam and said, it's not good for man to be alone. I'll make for him a helper. Number one, he dealt, he dealt with two things. Loneliness gave him a companion. Then a helper for life and destiny. So you can, if you are not yet married, every relationship is breakable. You enter courtship with the assumption that they are what you think they are. You do courtship checking for proof if your assumption was misplaced. So courtship, you know, and unfortunately, a lot of people spend the entire time they call courtship planning wedding. So all they do is to plan a wedding, not to examine an assumption. <laughs> That's a recipe for heartbreak. Courtship is a test season. Let me give you some examples. In a very sexual generation, I'll give you an example. If I have for context, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 7, message translation from verse 2. I'll give you an example for context. It's not, it's not a couple's forum talking about sex, but I'll go there just to give you something in context. Then I'll give the example I want to give. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, message translation from verse 2. They wrote to Pete, uh, the apostles and asked them about sex. Then he begins to answer the question. Okay, let's take from verse 1 just for context generally. Mm -hmm. From verse 1. Now getting down to the question you asked in your letter to me. First, it is a good thing to have sexual relations. Good. Next verse. Certainly, but only within the setting context. It's good for a man to have a wife. One, one. A, a, a. It is good for a man to have a wife and for a woman to have a husband. Now, see where I'm going to. Sexual drives are strong, but marriage is strong enough to contain them and provide for a balanced and fulfilling sexual life in a world of sexual disorder. One of the red flags you must check for in this 21st century is if they are in sexual order or sexual disorder. The person who is making you come will not stay. Singles. Capacity demonstrated why single is not an advantage. And I'll explain. As that person is touching you, you are signing an oath that the person lacks the capacity to honor God. Red flag number one. You think, oh, he can satisfy me. I'm amazed that singles are looking for number one checklist. Of who to marry, who can satisfy a bed? No. Sexual prowess as a single is not an advantage. It's a proof of a lack of capacity to say no. The Bible teaches restraint more than expression when it comes to sexuality. Read your Bible. That's why there are no sexual positions in the Bible. <laughs> you think God cannot teach it? But the emotion is so strong, he spent more time in Scripture teaching restraint because the greatest thing you need in marriage is the capacity to hold, not the capacity to express. Who teach Adam and Eve where to put them? No lecture, no seminar, no two weeks course. Okay, now you are getting the point now. Oh no, God! I did masters. I was away one year. We travelled in between, but every married person knows that there's no amount of travel <laughs> that makes it the way you. You came to the UK like three times. I came like three times. That's six in a year. I had a flatmate. He bought his return ticket when he was going across the next year. He didn't cite his family. What does he need at that point? Capacity or restraint? <laughs> Fornication is an oath of, I agree with you, touch me. You and I cannot say no 
to honor God. Say, somebody that you can't count how many times people have done without marriage. And I say, he cheated on me. Did he cheat on you? He continued the exploration. <laughs> he didn't cheat on you. That thing you were doing, he wanted to do with somebody else. Or she wanted to do with somebody else. She wanted to see how it feels. And the principle on which you were standing was wrong in the first place. Two of you did not even have right. You signed together. Let us do bad things. Anybody that can sin with you will sin against you. Let me tell the singles in the house. If you are ready to go single until you see God's will, God will not keep you single. The reason you feel there are no good people is that you have opened your door repeatedly to bad people. Because every time you entertain wrong, you delay right. Anytime you entertain wrong, you delay right. Final point so that I can answer a few questions tonight. Tomorrow eh, we will go deeper. Mm. This final point happens to married people more. I've been talking a lot to singles. Failing to intercede is one of the reasons why we have heartbreak. No matter how good your partner is, you are not doing them a favor if you cannot uphold them in prayer. Satan is a very smart devil. And I'm going to show you from scripture, in a very peculiar relationship in scripture, Luke chapter 22, verse 31 to 32, amplified. Luke 22, 31 to 32, amplified. I'll show you something from scripture. Jesus taught us one of the biggest lessons I've learned about Keeping marriage free of satanic in intrusion. Because let me tell you the truth. Some things that Satan has successfully done in some marriages is because the watcher was not watching. Luke twenty two thirty one 31, message. Simon, Simon, that's Peter. Listen, Satan has demanded permission to sift you, all of you like grain. Now Jesus is teaching us a big lesson here. Next verse. Very big lesson. Next verse. But I have prayed for you. Baby, please come. I need to graphically describe this. Clap, clap, clap. Fine woman is coming. Clap, clap, clap. She's fine. Jesus. My God. Let me know if you look back so that I can focus. My God. Don't follow. <laughs> Just stand there. See how dangerous what Jesus is doing here. Babe, I know you are going to insult me this night. Satan asked for you. In my prayer, I saw that you could not resist the temptation to insult me. But I have taken time to pray for you. When you insult me tonight, I will not react. Because in my intercession, I saw that you will be restored. You will come to the knowledge of your mistake. When you come to that point, know that I'm here loving you. Jesus said, Peter, I'm at my worst moment ever. This is when I need my companion to stand with me. But you are going to deny me. Jesus did not treat the curriculum of the denier. He didn't address the issue. He focused on his intercession. We are in a generation where people come to counsel us looking for the short test court to divorce because they do not understand that the number one intercessor ordained of God for this marriage and this woman is me. The number one in the, and I'm not talking when the person is in sin. Peter had not denied but through the place of prayer there are demons that are making you fight your ear fight that should drive you to your knee. Your partner has not even offended but you have caught it in the spirit. Satan wants to bring trouble in this marriage. Satan wants to bring pain here. I begin to lift her up. Lord she has been standing she will stand more. Grace attends to her. Oh, Lord, you're upholding her. I delete every negative friend. I delete every negative influence. I delete the voices that will destroy this marriage. I cover her in the name of Jesus. What am I doing? Proactive prayer. Not praying after the bad friends have come. He said, Peter, you will deny me. 
But let me tell you something. I covered your sin before you sinned it. And I'm here loving you. That's why he could say to Peter, do you agape me? Peter still didn't get the point. He said, I feel you, you master. You know how I feel about you. He said, feed my sheep. He said, do you agape me? He said, I feel you. Jesus was getting frustrated. Can't you go beyond your feelings? I went beyond my feelings to keep you here. The reason you are here and I'm asking you is that I didn't follow my feelings. Sir, the hardest thing Jesus faced was his death. And the closest people to him departed, denied him. Still, he came to them. This is the challenge I take, sir. And I ask, what can't I pray for this woman for? Sir, I need to stop here tonight. My God. My God. Hey! Kalabama Duzadia. This is strong. This is strong. It means in the place of prayer, I can catch signal of an event that is likely to occur. You know, Jesus went for that to say, when thou art converted, when you have survived, he says, strengthen thy brethren, means share with others what made you stand. Share. In Luke 22 and verse 3, and Satan entered Judah. Meaning sometime as a woman, as a man, you can say, no, this is not my husband. Then you go on your knees to intercede. This is strong. This is strong. I think for me, the greatest gift God gave me is forgiveness. Forgiveness. Because I'm always, I've had, it's very easy for me to forgive. It's very easy. How many of you are blessed tonight? How many will invite someone here tomorrow? Raise your hand. You are not going to come here alone tomorrow. Please, can we attempt to answer like three or four questions? You want to ask a question, just raise your hand. Can I have some of our people? I, I just feel like I should give you more time. Oh my God. We are going to start early tomorrow. Question. By four o'clock, we'll be speaking tomorrow. So we can cover more ground. He needs at least one and a half hour tomorrow. Have you seen light now? Man of God, do you, do you realize it's very easy to forgive the people you prayed for? The moment you could pray for someone, it's very easy to let go. Ha! Ah. Thank you, Jesus. Question, please. Let's make it interesting. Okay, um, Pastor. There's a hand there. Yes. Somebody is raising their hand there. Good evening, sir. My question goes this way. The Bible said as a woman, we should submit to our husbands. So if, for example, during courtship, my husband did not tell me that he wants a full-time housewife, and I work and probably make more money than him, and after marriage, he tells me I must resign for the marriage to work, what do I do in such a situation? 
praise God. Pastor, don't sit down. <laughs> okay. Um, let, me, let me start from the not too palatable place. I teach this everywhere and it's based on the word of God. And some of the things I teach can really come as hard knocks. I have made peace with it. Jesus once turned and there were remaining 12 after multitudes were with him. And he asked them, are you going too? Because I figured that if we keep feeding people into me in this generation, pastors will get overwhelmed with marriage counseling. Any marriage you enter is your fault. There are two things that you need to deal with to enter a marriage. When you sound this way, people say you are going to deep. Observation and discernment. Observation is what your eye can see. Discernment is what the eyes of God can see. Any signal you did not pick is because you did not ask. Because God is always speaking. That's why when they came to Paul and the apostles in 1 Corinthians and said, the person I married, I married as an unbeliever before I met Christ. Now, what do I do? He said, they stay, stay, because you can sanctify them. So much power is in the one who is right. Do you get what I'm saying? He only said, if they leave, you are not bound. But he did not say they could go. Why? He trusted, oh, thank God, the team for this year is light in this church. He trusted that light can drive out darkness. A lot of times we come to the place where we complain because our darkness become, our light becomes darkness. When the Bible says the light that being thee is darkness, how great is your darkness? Because there's an expectation on you to shine. Haven't said that, we are now in the situation. First Peter chapter 3. First Peter chapter 3. The Bible is so clear on all these subjects. You can submit him into repentance. And I'll give you a story. One story. Likewise, he was being subjection to your own husband. Subjection is a very strong word. That even, that if any obey not the word, the condition is not, since he's not obeying, don't submit. The only thing he cannot make you do is idol worship or to go into idolatry. That is serving, God, serving anything other than God. What he just describes is an economic situation. Finish. When hunger wired him, he go tell him he go work. No, it's, it's straight up. <laughs> and hunger go wired. You are bringing more money. He wants you to sit at home. Change strategy. You know those days you snap it, you change your style. Another one. An industrious woman will be industrious from a bedroom. You don't want me to go and work. I'll start making pop. Proverbs 31 woman. The woman was so industrious, her husband sat at the gate just to boast. So he wants to walk. If my wife makes more money, man of God, Jesus Christ, I increase my bedside, sleep well, and thank her. We chop the money. Oh, no, sir. We started there. Ten times my salary. I kept promising a future. But I say, even if any obey not, let's read on. I, I, on to topics like this, I like to stay with the word so that you can see it black and white. If you go into some other translation, you just leave this church now. I'm telling you, except the Holy Spirit and tell you. That they may without word be won by the conversation. Other translations say conduct of the wife. So that my conversation now is in action, not in words. Oh, wow. And even when I speak, they are calculated words. The truth is, I love to work. Not just love to work. You are such a good man. I rather support you. But I trust your wisdom. If you say you want me at home, not to go out to work, because you said it and I am your wife, and the Bible tells me to defer to your voice, I will stay at home. But do you mind if I open a kiosk outside? <laughs> Conversation has started. I'm also thinking, part of the reason I wanted to work, there's no woman that will not want to enjoy like me. But you're every a good man, you don't want me to work. But I'm wondering, these children's school fees, would you be able to shoulder it without being stressed? What are you doing? A, no, di a no. different kind of conversation. Not that you just carry a phone and call your sister. You see this mumu man. He has started again. I told you. Can you imagine? He said he should resign. I, are you, I, I mean, pastor just... Heartbreak. You start calling people. I told you. This man is pretending. I, no, I mean, pastor just gave a live example of what happens. But when you look at scripture, look at verse 2. Just look at, just look at verse 2. 
when they observe your chaste conduct accompanied with fear, this fear is not fear of them. If you read other translations, it's the fear of the Lord. All right? Accompanied with fear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do not let your adornment. He now begins to say, look, your value is more than quoting. I add one more scripture. I think, I think Pastor wants to say something. Now, go to 1 Corinthians 13. Pastor, there are elements of love we are not talking about. Just the way we lie to people in the body of Christ. If you just give your life to Christ right now, your life will change. It's a lie. You will go back to your house. It's still the same house. Your clothes have not changed. You will now be taught to acquit yourself right and to take victory. If you go to the toilet, it will still smell like it used to smell. It's your spirit that is transformed. Do you understand what I'm saying? Though I speak with tongues of men and tongues of angels, but have no love. This is where the body of Christ is. We don't even know the meaning of love. He's speaking about agape, all right? I have become a sounding brass and clanging cymbal. That's why there are so many spiritual people who cannot translate it into their marriage. High sounding notes. Next verse. Watch. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries, and all, sir, gift doesn't keep marriage. <laughs> Wisdom does. My wife is not sick trying to be healed. She's a wife trying to be loved. My wife is not a sinner on a crusade field. <laughs> so my evangelistic anointing is meaningless when she sees me coming home. She needs a husband. Ah! If you like, and let anointing friend. be smoking on your head. Don't provide food at home. You will see the color of your wife. <laughs> Go, just jump to verse. You know all this one. Go to verse 4. You know, you even know everything. I'm just reminding you. Love suffers long. Baby, come again. And it's kind. Come. Let me do a demonstration. <laughs> clap, clap. See woman coming. Woman, woman, woman. Fine woman. Hey! Let breeze just be blowing the hair. Let it do it. <laughs> Listen to what we should be saying on wedding day. Dear Julia, as I join myself to you today, I commit to suffer long if I need to. <laughs> I commit to be kind in every circumstance, never to be envious of you. I will not parade myself or be puffed up as far as it has to do with you. Next verse. I will never behave rudely to you. I will not seek my own way when you have a way. I will not be provoked. Do me anything. Slap me. Slap me. A submissive hand cannot even move. Slap me. I say, slap me. <laughs> I won't think evil of you. So if I can't get your phone, it's because it died, not because you are doing something bad. Does this look like the love we are preaching in this generation? Marriage is the oath of death to self. Next verse. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in truth. If you are not ready to suffer, don't marry. That's one of the suffering that you can encounter. The suffering of self-denial. Submission is not lack of capacity to disagree. It's the presence of capacity and choosing to still bow. For instance, my wife can buy a ticket and fly to Lagos. But she turns to me and says, I have this thing I want to go to Lagos for. Do you permit me to go? With your money in your hand. What with 21st century babe do, Gen Z? Babe, I'm in Lagos. Take it or leave it. <laughs> Pastor, I'm done on that question. Next question, okay. please. The next question, yeah. Good evening, sir. Thank you very much for the comprehensive lecture. I have a question. I actually, women are moved by what they hear, and men are moved by what they see. And when you were kind of eulogizing your wife and Pouring our colleagues on her, so saying affectionate words to her. Actually, it's, 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 it feels good. It makes her head to swell. Do you understand? But what I want to ask is this. What will make a man not to say such thing to a woman? Probably to praise her works, to appreciate her achievements, her looks and all that. Is it normal? Can't even notice her new yes. hairstyle. <laughs> At least you can talk. Why are men not talking? Why men not they talk? Pastor, should I answer? Answer. Should I answer? 
<laughs> Do you want answer? Yeah. Number one, maybe, maybe you are talking because you are a pastor. No. No, now. Past, no, I'm, I'm answering already. Uh, pastor began to speak in his office. You people were not there. I'm telling you, it was not a show. He was talking, it was my wife, her sister, and myself. Number one, I'm going to, first of all, let me start from the place you will not like. A lot of women are not worthy of that response. Mona, wait to never clap. A lot of women, let's start there. I will strike the man soon, but let me tell you, a lot of women, their husbands are looking for how they will stop being their wife. They are tired. There are things you get by inspiring it, not demanding it. The Bible describes a nagging woman like rain that will not stop to fall. It happens in Benin. Can this rain just stop falling? When all your husband has in his memory bank is your complaint of what he's not doing, he feels demotivated to do anything. I made my hair. He didn't talk. I did this. He didn't talk. I did this. He didn't talk. Hey, 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 hey. Let me tell you, a man cannot be in love with an irritant. Militant irritant. <laughs> Some of them militant. Because every question you ask, if you want to see the both sides, for some people who ask that question, I'm not speaking about you, they are not deserving to, to attention. They have nagged him down. Somebody once reached out to me, man of God, real life story. She was reporting herself and seeking counseling. She had a chronic trust issue. If her husband steps out to cut his hair, she was describing this to me. She will calculate it takes 10 minutes to drive to the barber, add five minutes in case of traffic, if he meets plenty of people, maximum into I know that barber shop in 20 minutes that finished. When she does all the calculation and the man is not coming, 50 minutes call. Where are you? Where are you? How can he want to come home? How can he commend her? She was reporting that the man didn't come to me. She came to me, said, I have a problem. That's one side. Let me say this to you. If you read first, I will not go there now for time's sake. If you read first Peter 3, the woman would not demand certain things. She would earn it. Earn it. For instance, some people are doing my money, your money. The man cannot praise you because there's nothing praiseworthy. When the Proverbs 31 woman unleashed her giftings, the husband had nothing to struggle with. That's why he could sit at the gate and say, do you know my wife? Do you know who I married? You see that woman? I tell you the truth, I lie not. The debt I owe, I cannot pay. I can't. The debt I owe. You know how you get federal government job in Nigeria when she started? And you begin to doubt if you really have a job because six months they have not paid you. What? <laughs> That's, that was her experience. Somebody I had given tutorials in law school was an honorable. I was a young boy. I had given him a lot of tutorials. Called me. You are getting married. You any plan for honeymoon? No plans. I would love to. He sent us to Obudu. While we were coming back from Obudu, there was the guy that sent us. You know, I would have not been able to afford the family had tried for me in the wedding. While we're coming back from Obudu, she now got the confirmation that she's truly working for government. Five months salary hit once. This salary that I said one month of it is ten, was ten times what my own papa was paying me. I determined what happened to that money, not her. I had some debt I had incurred by the way during wedding. She looked at me and wondered why that's not the first to go, and I made it the first to go. I don't have time to talk about her family and her parents. The role they have played in my life. I'm indebted. This one is not my original love now. It's that action has woken something in me. It takes a monster and an ingrate of a man to have a certain type of woman and still be stupid. Now we have gone <laughs> to the other person. And there are such people. Some of them need deliverance. And the deliverance they need is to bring them to tomorrow night. So that they can receive sense. Because the Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So for instance, man of God, I was preaching somewhere. I'm not kidding. My wife was there. By the move of the spirit, I said men should stand up and hug their wife and stay in the hug. Not just a man who had been married about 10 years started crying. He was not used to being affectionate. What have they been doing for 10 years and they have children? He now gave his story. He was raised by a hard father. Hug was a strength to him. How did he describe deliverance again? He began to cry. 
God has said, hold your wife. Stay there. <laughs> Stay. Hold. Remain there. <laughs> Begin to whisper in their ear. We'll do it tomorrow. Yes, sir. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? So, some people can be non-responsive and they need to be taught. Loving is an art. It's an art. For instance, we're coming down today to go on board. My wife, you know, Nigeria, they punish us a lot. You know, you'll be going through that staircase. My wife should carry bag. The day cut my hand. I carry my bag, carry her bag. Hey! As I was going in front of her, she'll say, I have a man. You have to, before you say thank you to him, you should find all these things he's been saying about his wife. Are you like that? Are you like that? That they should carry your bag? Did the Lord start by carrying bag? Thank you, thank you. Wait, let them come and carry your bag. <laughs> this church. No, no, clap for this church. Clap for this church. Clap for this church. All of you know me in this church. I don't pretend. If mama was not good, I go talk him. But you know I would have said it. I will come and tell all of you that you should pray for me. <laughs> that the way things are now. <laughs> I did pray. I will, I, Raka, will I not say it? Let me just wrap up on that. So there are men who need to be taught. Then there are men who are damaged. I tell you a personal story. My parents were separated. I was eight. They divorced. I was ten. I've had four mothers. That's right. why. I, come again. I know family dysfunction firsthand. Personal story. That's why I thought a message is available on our YouTube channel from a broken home but not in a broken marriage. I unlearned where I came from. I told her as a university student, this journey I want to take with you, I have no precedent in my life for it. I'm a product of failure. And reproducing failure will come natural to my type. No example. I told her, I'm, you are my one chance and I don't want to blow it. Some men are damaged. On the street. They need intensive care help. Those mm. types. I'll give you particulars of the damage of many men. A lot of men are damaged by distraction. Every man is talking is who they are talking to. Child. Some men, some men, oh God, why is this photo mixed? I thought it's let me say the best way I can put it. Some men are not performing their marital obligations at home, but they are begging a girl somewhere to lick her. Every man is talking to is who are they talking to? That's one of the particulars of damage. See the woman you should do it to. Mm -mm. He cannot chat his wife and maintain chat for five minutes, but he's chatting 15 girls per person. It's a damage, man. That one needs deliverance. If you are not yet married, don't dare it. Run. If that's a married situation, go and seek counsel. There are many things that cannot be said in open like this. Counsel needs to happen. Where prayer needs to happen. Prayer needs to happen. Some people are damaged. They are wiring. Because I keep telling people I'm an escaped generation. I told her straight up, you are my one chance. And by God's grace, I don't want to blow it. Tomorrow, I'll go a bit into some of the things I had to do personally. To begin to take myself away. I know this Away from your past. First, first answer. Away from your yes. foundation. Yes. I know this Dealing with your hand. foundation. Exactly. There are some people who come from a dysfunctional family. You know, you know, man of God, you hear today people say marriage is calm. Have you heard things like that yes. before? Yes. Everywhere. That, that's not in the Bible. And it's not true. It's not true. It is because of who you are talking to. Yes. Yes. I'm telling you. Because if you have a foundation where things didn't work, your parents are not the role models. Mom. The world is the standard. Yeah. That your parents' marriage didn't work does not mean that is the standard. Yeah. Forever, oh God, thy word is settled. God has no other method outside his word. Mm. So my heart breaks when believers, rather than look at the perfect law oh, of liberty, liberty, 
the word of God, they are looking at people who had failed. As a growing up child, I can't count how many times I saw my father. We lived with our mother because my father is a retired police officer. He was traveling everywhere. So that is supposed to affect me. I think I've shared this before in this church. The first two years of my marriage was hell. I have this mentality that the man is the boss. You know, I enjoy seeing my wife cry begging me. It makes me happy. Pastor, it just it shows I'm in story. charge. Others will not speak like this. One day <laughs> she brought wine and brought one cup to see how local I was then. Now she wanted to be romantic so that two of us can drink from one cup. I took the glass cup, I broke it. Life story. Why did he not bring two cups? You know, I just want just a local native brain. <laughs> just to feel in charge. Something that is not supposed to be an issue, I will just scream. You know, when we got married, my wife would kneel down and greet me. I thought I was normal. Wow. Local man. It was after like going to two years. It was after we had a discussion, my wife told me that any time I leave and go to work, she would be crying. Because then she felt she had made a mistake. So one day, I sat down in my church office. I said, if anything happened to this marriage, now even the ministry I'm pursuing will not be there. That means this woman is very vital to my success. I said yes. Then I started reading books on marriage. Then I now realized that my wife is help me. Mm. She's not a slave. Mm. Mm. Then I now made, because my wife used to be afraid of me. First two years. If I come in, the lion has come in. <laughs> he will be hearing my voice. She will be shaking. So first, I started making her my friend. Mm. So she said when I started, she became more scared uh, <laughs> from being a lion to a lamb. <laughs> what must have happened? So I now told her, write out seven things that you think I'm not doing right. The past seven. <laughs> Just the right and good. Now, some of those things were striking to me because I was scared. I said, no, feel free, feel free. I made her relax. If they talk, they talk. I said, English like this. Then I made up my mind. I said, rather than be your husband, I want to be your friend. <laughs> my marriage actually picked up after two years. We became friends. They started talking, discussing. That, that's what my own deliverance. Mm. Now, let me tell you this. In closing, never live in denial. Yeah. Because the challenge some of us have, we know we have a problem. We know we may be the problem, but we refuse to accept. Now, you can't even be delivered if you don't acknowledge there is an issue. Yeah. Yeah. I, I acknowledge the fact that I was the problem. I was shouting too much. I was speaking too much. I was seeing too much. So I needed to sit down and do what I call meditation, thinking. Today the case is different. Don't live in denial. You know, I'm, 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 I, those of you, you know I'm territorial. How many of you understand that? I'm, I'm very, very territorial. I'm very, very commanding. But they don't command in marriage. You command demons. <laughs> not your wife. You can't, the way you cast out, you foul spirit. Your wife is not a foul spirit. She's not. I 
I don't know if I'm communicating to someone here. Then, in my church office, I made up my mind. And I settled. The first thing I did was to make her free with me. Hear me. If your wife can't talk to you, there is a problem. Because there is a gift that God has given to women. Perception. A woman can perceive what you will never perceive. Sometimes my wife will tell me, I can't place my hand on it, but I'm not comfortable with this friend. I will say, I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg. Within a short while, the thing will start manifesting itself. Not one, not twice, not three, not four. I don't know if we have blessed anyone. Is this meeting worth it? Is this meeting worth it? Now let me tell you, what we try to do in our singles meeting, we try to be practical. Because if we are not practical, we can't help anyone. But can I say this? For those who are already married, there's no marriage that cannot be sweet. For those who are single, be wise. But for those who are already married, take it from me. There's no marriage that God cannot twist. Why you are worried that your spouse is not playing his or her role, try and play your own. Sometimes we leave what we should do and for concentrate on what our partner should do. Let's rise. 